let's see with that. Um, <laughs> open new tabs as of right. Tweet. It's a me. Cattle. Let's see, can I hear myself? Ooh, I'm pretty. This is probably good for the audio. Let me look at sharing the the thing in the Discord. Self promotion. Do I want to post it at? Let's post it at. Oh no, I just dropped this thing to be open. Let's see. The live plugs. Dicey, dicey. Let's go ahead and plug that over there. Mm-hmm. And there we go. Do, do, do. So welcome to today's stream. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, MetaZoo and pretty much how to get into it. Uh, as you can see, I have quite a lot of products in front of me. I have the release event medal which shows that you um, have uh, been there for the launch of MetaZoo here and there perfect and you can see this is this is a pretty cool card here the original owner of this page attended a MetaZoo cryptid release event uh, benefit of this card is part of of course being part of history and in, they have five different tribal decks I have all five but I'm going to show you the forest one as the example uh, for learning how to play MetaZoo as well. Um, but not uh, only do they have tribal decks, they also have spell books, which are kind of like the fat packs or the elite trainer boxes uh, from other uh, trading card games. Um, let's see, as it, you, can, you can tell it, what it says on the side, here it get, you will get 10 booster packs, a sealed holographic promo card, a metallic coin, a rule book for the game, 60 uh, card sleeves, and a cryptid map. So we're going to open this up and show you what the packs look like, what the cryptid um, map looks like, and of course uh, what it looks like to open these packs. Uh, and then another thing we have here is actually what the booster packs looks like. This is actually the Kickstarter first edition. Um, feature boxes won't look like this. They're going to look more like the OG Wizard of the Coast Pokemon um, base sets or base booster sets. Um, there is 36 pack in here and you can see it's a good quality. They have the plastic wrapping with their uh, logo on it as, you, as we can probably focus in. You can see the MetaZoo, MetaZoo Krypton Nation. That's the name of the set. Whoops, I should probably go like this because you guys can see it better if, if it's like this and you know there's a lot of cryptics on it there's Bigfoot there's a giant snake there's the flatwood uh, alien and of course we have some more awesome artwork on the side we got Bay of the Blue o uh, Ox and we got uh, the FISA uh, FISA bird big looking dragon and we have Mothman in the back and uh, so that this is what the booster box look like and the last thing that they also have available uh, from their from their line is uh, blister packs here as you can see this is what their blister packs look like you get a metallic, met metallic coin a mouth man promo card and a booster pack And so this is a, you know, this is a pretty cool card game. 
how I protect my cards is I use uh, Top Water Perfect. I use a whole bunch of different brands of sleeves. I've used Ultra Pros. I've used Mayday Games. Um, what else is there? Catans. Um, so really, it, it whatever you prefer for your card sleeve, you can find it. Uh, it is the size of any other trading card game, except for Yu-Gi-Oh. I know Yu-Gi-Oh. They have a smaller card size, but um, it it is the same size as a Pokemon or um, Magic the Gathering card. You can see going it over with the Pokemon card, it is pretty much one to one, and the size is similar. And how I see yeah, how I store these, I use top loader sleeves just to get a nice, perfect, uh, snug fit. KMC sleeves. And so I'm going to open this guy up. Oh, my light is dying, so I need to charge that. There we go. So we have the card here. I'm going to open this up. Not keep it sealing its uh, per own sealer. And so this is what the card looks like. I'm kind of sad that these are pretty much not straight. But uh, it's, you know, it's not always perfect. But I'm happy that we got a, a cool release of that metal card uh, for the game nonetheless. So I'll take my sleeve. Um, I'll load it up um, like this. And now we have a sleeve card. And of course, if you want to protect any of your uh, rare hollows for the long terms, you can use a top loader. I use a 3x4 uh, uh, top loader. And you can see it fits there pretty well. This is what I use to ship cards out to people. A little tape over, uh, put it in a uh, cardboard envelope, then put it in a bubble mailer, and then send it all out. So this is what the the event metal promo is again. Uh, you usually will get this when you place an order for the when you're uh, when you place an order uh, pretty close to the release date. Next thing is the tribal deck. This is a great way to get started. It has everything you need to start playing the game. Oh, don't have a pair of scissors here. Trying to open this. Good seal. That's what you want in a product like this. So you have your seal of authentication here. Uh, but they don't put it at the bottom. Um, kind of sad because I can just open it from the bottom and not worry about breaking that seal. So maybe in the future they'll probably put a seal in the bottom and in the front or bottom and top but you can see this is what we get in a deck each deck is sort of seamed through a sort of style of playing as you can see i haven't read what the style is for the game but you see here we have a cryptic map this map is so large but uh, let me go ahead and take you to one of my favorite part of the map Where is okay, that's good enough? As you can see, we have the United States of MetaZoo. And let's see, where Jersey Devils all the way here. It's kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard to put in the camera. Let's see if I can focus it. You can see Jersey Devils right there. Whoops. Right there. And there's a bunch of other cryptics. Mothman is all the way over there. And then of course we have California. We have the Fresno Nightcrawlers. right there in the bottom where Fresno is 
with the ghost steers and the night watchers. So this is a pretty cool map. I already have quite a few and I've been giving them away to uh, people who haven't picked up the first, uh, first collector edition set and I'll probably put them all over my wall. So that was the cryptic map. Next is the little rule book here. This rule book is uh, kind of outdated now. The playtesters have updated the rules so you can go ahead and um, go on their website. Okay, go on the Discord, go to gameplay discussions, and they'll have a link of the updated rulebook there. But uh, this is something you will definitely need to catch up and read uh, to learn how to play the games. And I can show you a simple way of how to play once I get a few cards here. Um, the neat thing about the tribal decks is you'll actually get two promos of the um, the main beastie in the deck. As you can see, this is the Poo. The Pukyu Chieftain. Kind of hard to say. But you get two cards of them. And uh, I'm not going to open the one that's in the pack link. I'm going to go ahead and open the one in the. in its own packaging. Let me go ahead and. since autofocus doesn't like to be nice, there we go. Let's go ahead and. put it at eight so we can look at it. So this is what the deck looks like you get I believe 40 cards in this one uh, some decks are 50 some decks are 40 There we go. Able to open it all up. So that's what the deck, the cards that are in the deck. We're going to go through and skim through them. We, of course, have the Chieftain. Uh, when it, in the arena, Beastie's name with uh, Pew Woodley, uh, you control gain. Uh, plus 10 life points and their attack will do 10 plus more damage uh, for all attacks name redeeming barriers on beasties you control gains the following the target of the attack or the target opponent paid in combat is inflicted with poison so his uh, his attack is full volley uh, full volley gains 5 plus damage for every carry counter on pages you control the target of the attack is inflicted with poison times poison two very nice so it it gains it, it gains powerful the more curie uh, quiver quilt counters it has so let's see what has quilt counters here's the regular uh puke pukeers puck widgies it takes four force or is to summon it with 50 life life points. Um, this PC can only be contracted face down using tra uh, traps. And when P Pukwiji is flipped face up, place X Kiri counter on the on it where X equals the number of or paid for it when it's flipped. So I'll have four Kiri. I'll have four Kiri quilt counters on it and it has redeeming barriers which is 10 times x i think x is the number of curies and okay that's pretty cool hey kevin the arena there's an arena on pvpg actually actually costs x now so it doesn't cost four anymore, right? As uh, as I'm hearing it live, um, it is no longer a cost of four forest. It is the cost of X forest, which can be pretty strong. I do like that. And so let's see, how many do we get? Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six of these bad boys. It says we can have six per spell books. That's the one thing I like about the um, 
the cards and the cards in themselves um, it tells you how many you can have in a spell book which is what they call their library or their deck of course uh, the chieftain you can only have one of the next card is the up group uh, Grupties, or Grupters. It has travel boost. This page will gain plus 10 life points and the attack will gain plus 10 damage for every beastie fearsome critters in the arena. Ooh, very nice. It gets stronger for more beasties. It looks like you can also play this as a trap. Uh, when it's flipped up, you can turn... Flipped up this turn, Spear Splinter will do an additional 15 damage. That's very nice. So pretty another good creature to have face down. I think this uh, the mechanic of the deck is all about surprising your your opponent with uh, trap cards. So it says you can have up to four. Of course, we only have two, and I think that's enough though. Two would be great. We have a Mantis Man. Cost one of any aura, and in four two auras. And this BC may be contracted for one less forest aura. If you are in an arena where Prey Mantis are common. Oh, that's very cool. I think I've, I've seen a few Prey Mantis in my uh, garden here and there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, only for uh, two auras. And it looks like we have four of them in this deck. We can have up to six per spell books. We have a rope, a rope Tide. Rope Tits. Oh, look at that little adorable looking creature. You may fatigue rope teeth to remove uh, flying from a target beastie until the end of the turn. That's actually pretty helpful with a lot of cards with flying in the arena. Travel boost against plus 10 attack points and plus 10 life points for every beastie fearsome creature. Uh, and it's uh, and it's only one force uh, aura. That's really nice. You can have up to six. And we have one, two, two in the deck. Wow. You can have six, but you can only get two in the deck, which means you're going to have to buy three decks to get a playset. Riptides is busted. Yeah, he looks like, from the style of it, from what I've been playing before, he is a pretty fearsome card to have in your deck. Uh, we got Thorn Whip as our next card to look at in part of the deck. When Thorn Whip is face is flipped face up, it deals 25 damage to beastie or artifact. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So you can flip it to do damage. We get three of those. I didn't know it also attacks artifacts as well. Uh, might be handy for those auric uh, crystals. Uh, next, next page in our library, we have Razored Leaf. You can have up to six. It deals 25 damage to target caster. If they control any water pages, Razor Razor Leaf will deal an addition will deal 50 damage instead. Ooh, so this will punish your opponents if they have a water type deck or any water cards in their um, if they control any water cards. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, we have bookmark the next card in our deck. It looks like we can only have two of this card here. And it lets you draw two cards from the top of your spell book. So that's really nice. We have the Force God Umber. Chaos Potion is really it's good with Razor Leaf. Oh yeah, it's good to mention, uh, Kevin. So there's a card called Chaos Potion. And that lets you change the aura of any target beastie. So you can make them water. And Razor Wind will do 50 damage guarantee. So we have Forest God Umber. I love the art. It looks really creepy. There's like a baby, uh, baby bird in the uh, amber. Uh, and this is this will lets you uh, generate additional uh, forest auras in the arena. And you can only have two of, but the deck you'll get one. So it's always good to have another one. The next card here is a Chaos Crystal. A very helpful card uh, especially in the first couple turns um, sure it's the weakest crystals or weakest rock with 25 life points but when you fatigue it you can generate three auras of any time type 
So very helpful. Of course, the gimmick to that, you can only have one per spell book, so everyone's going to be running it. And we have some forests. We have two forest cards here. <coughs> Excuse me. So forests will be helpful because some creatures will uh, gain benefits depending on the areas you're in. Of course, you can play with the force wall effects. If you're within the forest, you know, your, your battlefield, your arena counts as being in part of a forest. But if you live in the city and there's no forest around, you can play one of these terror cards and the battlefield will have the same effect as if you were in a forest, making your beasties or spells even more powerful. And we have forest auras. So these is what you use, kind of like the, the, the lands in Magic the Gathering, the energy cards uh, from Pokemon. Uh, you use these to contract your beasties, to contrast your spells, and to contract the uh, artifacts if they cost anything. And it looks like you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 aura cards, which sounds about the standard for any um, spellbook that you're building. Um, so this is 14 auras. We have two terras. We have artifacts here. We have. I believe two artifacts. We have a Chaos Crystal and a God Umber. So we have ways to generate more forest uh, as well. And then for our spells, let's see. We have the spell book. We have Razored Wind. We got Thorn Whip. And so that's it for spells. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like you want about seven spells in your deck. For creatures, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 beasties uh, in our deck. So 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14. Um, yeah, that's actually a pretty good size. Um, of cards for your deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So we have 40 card in this deck here. And that is the uh, surprising way to build a deck there. You have to at least build a deck of 40 cards here. And as we wait to, as uh, I will be playing with this deck more often, I'm going to go ahead and start sleeving it. Let me see how, I think I want to do it from the bottom because the MetaZoo sleeves, ah, oh, such a perfect fit. The cool thing about the meta sleeves here is that they're not like the other sleeves I've used before. They're kind of a little bit see-through and their opening is from the bottom so if I put the the hole on top and the card whoops, the card here now this card is completely sealed airtight As you can see, it's kind of see-through. You can still see the symbol uh, up the back of the card here. So these aren't sleeves I would use if I was using uh, some proxies. Um, I would use like the Ultra Pros, Dragon Shields, uh, if you're going to use proxies because the cards are the same size as the uh, as the cards from Pokemon and the cards from Mag of with Magic the Gathering. So time to double sleeve these cards and think of a strategy when it comes to playing these cards. So now that we know that that Puke is since we know Puke now cost X instead of 4 the curi the the quills on them can go up pretty insane making its attack even more stronger. 
instead of being 40 it can be up to 40 40 or above I guess anything between 10 to uh, since we have what the 14 auras we can make it <laughs> 140 damage quite insane for the late, late game uh, I'll probably think of replacing a few of these with another card since it looks like I don't have to worry about bringing as much as, a, as I need and since these are trap cards these are a real nice surprise same with the um, the Algorter Agropliter I see it's a bad attacker but it's the best crap defender uh, yes yes so it's the it's a best beastie to use as a crap defender which is a pretty neat way because the way the game style the gameplay is I wish I can explain it better I, I need to read the rules like more often so I can memorize the wording of it right uh, and there's like an order of operation but I believe you, you declare what you want to attack with then your opponents can react to what they want to use as a defender and same with uh, crap cards you can as long as you can uh, pay for its cost which is the cost of its aura on the top right uh, you can flip it and then by flipping it now you have defenders to um, to to fight it with but I believe trap cards you can place it under other cards so I guess the idea is to put a trap under under the creature that's going to attack and once he attacks you flip up the trap There's a few mechanics I don't know yet, but uh, I'll eventually learn them. And then once uh, we are done sleeving this uh, this deck here, I will show you what some of the sample hands would look like, and maybe what uh, first turn plays I would do if I had the deck. And then after that, we're going to open the spell book and see what kind of cards we can get from it to uh, to add to this deck. I know I already have the whole collection of cards, but I want to see if somebody else would buy a spell book, um, what kind of deck, uh, what kind of cards we can possibly get to uh, improve our deck. and. The cool thing about this, even though this is the Kickstarter edition, so this wasn't even its final form. Uh, the first edition uh, stuff that's coming out in June, July, it will be much more better, much more improved, and we'll have additional great stuff. The booster box will now have a box topper or a surprise card in it as well, and it could be of one of 10 aura cards that is a hollow. Normally these aura cards are not hollow. They're pretty they're pretty plain. The only cards that are hollow in the in the Kickstarter edition are the all the rares and then there is a reverse foil which is instead of the background being foiled uh, the the item in focus is foiled. So the beasties, the artifact, uh, the spell and so on um, there is a few rare cards that are reverse foil there's some uncommons that are reverse foils and there are some commons that are re reverse foils uh, so it's quite it's quite pretty interesting to see what it will get foiled in the next feature sets because we won't know and so far there there is quite a lot of cool cards that you want to get that are foiled in both the the rare slots and in the common slot especially the uh, the frog uh, triple triple die triple Rito. I have not been able to uh, test that card out since it's uh, the only way to get it is through the reverse hollow 
it was never printed in the uh, in the run because the the card that it was supposed the 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 spot it was supposed to be printed on was uh, overshadowed by another card, meaning the card that was over it got printed uh, twice. And that card is Earthquake. So Earthquake is both a common and uncommon. Originally an uncommon, but now a common and uncommon for the Kickstarter edition. Uh, that problem, that problem's gonna has been will will be fixed in the future. In future sets, especially with the first edition box, um, a lot of the Aretas and FAQs will likely be applied to the cards. Especially for some of the tribal deck, I'm pretty sure the the Pukujis will be fixed to have X Forest instead of Four Forest. And same with the Ice deck. I think one of the card, one of the the Snowman or Abominable Monster. Um, his icons were colorless and water in an in an ice frost deck and there's no water auras there's a chaos crystal but there is no other water source to play that card in so i'm glad that they're reprinting the base edition and they're fixing up some of the mistakes that happened during uh, printing so we're almost done sleeving our cards we're just sleeving away and we're going to sleeve again. I think we have just two forest cards. And the chaos crystals. I need two more sleeves. I always get close when it comes to guessing how many sleeves I'll need. Pulling it out of the packs of sleeves. That was two off. So I, I'm really trying to get a, a reverse foil crystal because that's all I'm missing from my collection. But the a great way to get these chaos crystals are in the tribal deck if you want to play the game and have a chaos crystal to play with. So they're pretty common um, in the game. Oh, I loaded this one up the wrong way. I want the closing end to be at the bottom and not at the top. Because now we're going to re-sleeve the deck again. And this time, sleeve it up like that. And this is what I do to all my decks, especially if they're um, my competitive decks or the decks that I will be playing with the most. I'm going to try to turn each tribal deck as a competitive viable uh, for players who want to get into playing the game. They can just pick up a tribal deck uh, and you know buy the commons or the uncommons or the rares that they need to uh, upgrade their deck with and start playing at uh, you know station events at your local game stores or against your friends and so that's why i have the spell book because if you're a player of any trading card game i'm sure you would pick up a a kind of a pre-release deck or an, or a uh, ready battle deck and the whole point of trading card games is to collect and trade and to improve your existing deck kind of like how most of the sleeves aren't fully cut you can see there's some leeway here from the opening So this part here overhangs and the tr closing part is right here. But that's fine. That's why I'm double sleeving them so I don't have to worry about the little weird extra extra length on one side. 
but these are pretty good cheap sleeves. Very unique to have the opening on the bottom. Normally I would see them the opening on top because that's how I'm used to sleeving my cards, putting the card in there like this instead of like like this. So it's going to be very daunting because I'm going to do this to all my cards and uh, if I rotate my cards out it's going to be hard to remember which is going to go and where it's going to go. Uh, that is a good goal Mario. Unfortunately most of the travel decks oh, aren't super good. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, Kevin, I, I, I would assume you already would know that answer. But like for me, I kind of want to give people the the doubt of the benefit to play with the the cards that they buy, right? Uh, what if this wasn't a competitive person, and I just want to play for fun? Uh, all my friends would have tribal decks. We're not thinking about like making our own deck, or if we do make our own deck and make it powerful, then we'll we'll start looking at your website. Uh, MT notebook I believe or MZ notebook and then copy a deck from one of our awesome deck writers uh, like that lightning deck that small update to the lightning deck was really powerful I'm not gonna lie the lightning ball was very useful thing balls useful um, and I think most of the other cards aren't very useful but like, hey, if it's technically an upgrade to a tribal deck, so you're you're also trying, aren't you, Kevin? <laughs> so this is the boring part of sleeving your cards, but it's also good practice to protect your cards, because what if you spill water on them, or worse, when you're drinking with your friends and they spill the beer on the table? Haven't had that happen to me yet. But I'm always prepared just in case. Cards are always protected. And it will make the uh, deck look bigger, so that's why I kind of like want to double sleeve my cards. Yeah, it's so weird. Some of the some of the cuts in the cards aren't straight. I feel like I need to get a scissors and just snip the snip the bottom because some bottoms they have a lot of a lot of plastic like this pack right here has way too much showing on top compared to this one where it's all the way up but there's no um there's no border here so kind of sad that some of these sleeves aren't that great but I guess that's why you have so many of them that's totally fair we have to see how uh, the wildness affects the metagame uh, but for now mono force all the way for a budget deck that's very good to hear. Yeah, I do believe there is quite a lot of cards in the uh, in the forced aura category in the base set. Uh, I need to double check this, but you probably know the answer to this, Kevin. Um, what is the most common color, or who, which color has the most cards in the base set? Because I feel like, like it's either forest or dark. I feel like it's dark. Spook air auras. Uh, not spooky air auras. Spirit auras. Dark aura. I feel like there's a lot of cards in it. Yeah, forest, uh, forest cards. There's 24 of them in the set. Out of 149, I believe. 59. So it's easy to build a forest deck in the tribal. 
The lowest of each cards are 10 each, and of the ones without the travel decks. Cool, cool. That's good to know. Yeah, and I feel like uh, light barely has any color, if I remember correctly. Light aura. So few cards. It's sad to, to, to see that. Uh, but hopefully we'll see more light aura cards in the future. I believe light is more of a support card. We're almost done sleeving our tribal deck. And I can give you a sample of what the hand uh, looks like when it comes to uh, playing MetaZoo. Ah, uh, check my DMs. Cool, cool. I have so many messages. I go to work all day. Super busy at work. Didn't have time to even catch up on a uh, on uh, Discord all day today. Oh, that's a tiny picture. I have to zoom in. So it looks like there's ten cosmic cards, twenty-two darkness cards. 10 earth cards, 15 flame cards, 24 forest, 10 frost, 10 light cards, 14 lightning cards, 16 natural cards, and 10 spirits. Okay, so spirits and light and cosmic are the weakest, um, weakest type in the set. But they're great support, by the way. I'm not saying that they're weak as <clears throat> as a bad card to play. I meant weak as in um, not a, not viable to build a pure deck out of them. You will need 40 cards in a deck uh, with 10 cards available, ranging from one card to to maybe 10 best case scenarios. I don't think any of those three auras have a card that you can take 10 of um, but that is I think that is it I have all the cards sleeve I think there's one that is sort of over yeah this one I'm gonna change its sleeve because I don't want to be caught cheating because I can totally tell what this card is because it's the only card that is marked so always check your cards just in case you know, I tend to play games for fun. If I do get competitive, I want to be as fair as I can be uh, with my opponents. And also, at the same time, have fun. So now that I'm done saving the cards in the packs, this is how thick it is with some double-sided sleeves. See, oh no, are they, are they there? Oh, there are more cards that are showing the top. Um, I need to fix all the some of the sleeves again, so I'm going for the sleeves that aren't showing the top. But there's now that I'm looking at it, pulling everything up, there is a few more. that are showing me that they are yeah these 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 sleeves here are not worth it oh and they they break pretty easy too interesting so they I would say they're they're kind of low quality but of course that's what some sleeves are. I always like to test the durability of the plastic that they use. So it's a good quality to 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 use casually, but I wouldn't use these in a uh, in a tournament to be honest. If they have this kind of consistency of some errors. 
And of course, always count your cards, especially if you have a side deck, make sure you know what your main deck has and what your sideboard has. I can't stress this enough as a, a competitive player. Uh, if you want to get competitive, always count your cards and not counting your cards by just like, oh, I know what, um, what card I'm going to draw if I draw seven cards your cards make sure your deck is legal and to make sure you have the right cards in your deck let's try this perfect this does not show anything on top so let's put that there perfect again awesome not awesome I can see why they give you extra sleeves in the uh, in the packs thank you very good idea have extra sleeves just in case one does break like uh, on you on accident when you're switching cards out so here's my 40 card deck as you can see it's all sleeved all double sleeve uh, because I am a madman like that and now I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle my cards I like to take it down the middle and put it in the middle and shuffle it Another way to shuffle your cards is to just do them in sets like these. So I'm doing it by five. This will help with randomizing the cards in different piles. And this is also a great way to help you count your, your deck as well to see how many cards you have. Since this is 40, we should have a even amount of cards in our pile, that being 8 cards per pack. So let's go ahead and do that. Do another pile shuffle. And there we go, our deck is now fully um, shuffled. And uh, in MetaZoo, you will draw seven cards, like any, uh, like most trading card games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll go ahead and turn it over onto you so you can see. So this is our hands. We got the Whip, Aura, Razor Wind. Uh oh, this was upside down. Forest, Chaos Emerald. Chaos Crystal, Mantis Man, and Razor Leaf again. So that is my first hand. Uh, this is something I would likely keep. Uh, it is good enough. Um, we're going to go ahead and place an Aura card on the battlefield. Uh, and we're going to place some um, cards in the, in the field. Uh, since we have a trap card, we can place them face down and not worry about anything. And maybe this Chaos Crystal. Uh, crystals are pretty much safe in the beginning unless your opponent plays um, uh, with water cards in their deck because there is a card called Water, water Gun that can easily one-shot a Chaos Crystal. You can't one-shot any of the other crystal, but the Chaos Crystal is uh, quite a sensitive card. So now that we have that as our first turn, we'll end our turn. I will awaken my Chaos Crystal since it enters the battlefield fatigue. I'll draw another card from my library. We got a uh, Pukuji. Uh, let's go ahead and place another Aura card in the battlefield. Uh, from the looks of it, I might want to mm -hmm -hmm. tap this for three forests, tap this for two more forest auras and play a PUG for a 5 forest. So now of course if I had some coins here, uh, I'll use coins as my uh, token. 
So let me go ahead and grab my coin jar. Drop a handful. And I'm going to put five full tokens on my puke. And I'll go ahead and pass it to my opponent. My opponent will do his turn. So now my third turn. I'll awaken my cards that I've that have uh, uh, activated last turn. I might put this crap underneath my opponent card just to just to make him worry about that crap card. Then I'll draw a card for my turn. I got another sworn whipped. So no more aura cards, and that looks like a pretty good way to control the board. Of course, I would likely. Oh, you know what? I already messed up. He can't be placed face up. So I've I've made the mistake of not reading my cards. So I'm going to reset this game because I've done a noopsie. So I'm supposed to uh, place uh, Puka G faces down to, uh, to play him. He cannot be face up. You cannot play him face up. You can only contract him uh, face down and when you flip him up. So it's always good to read your cards too. It would make him so much better. Yes, I guess. And uh, if I remember correctly, how does uh, how do craps go off? I should read it in the manual. I need to start reading this rule book because I've only played a few games of it, and I don't know all the mechanics of the game. So let's see, where is the gameplay? Wrong group. Spells and rules. Cryptic book resize goes there. Traps only activate if an attacking if the attacker attacks a page with a trap underneath it. Or if there is an alternate trap condition, i.e. anti magic field. Anti magic field. Okay. That makes some, uh, a lot of sense. I would assume you would have to wait for your opponents to attack to activate crap cards. So my my guess from other <laughs> trading card games was uh, spot on. So this is another example of a hand. We have Razor Win, uh, Puke, Forced Aura, Thorn Whip, another Aura, another Aura, and two Whips. So we have quite a lot of crap cards underneath in our opening hand. Uh, or they activate if the opponent attacks an open trap. So you mean if it attacks a, a crap card that's on the field, like for example, if uh, Pukiji was out in the open like this from a past turn and I have a thorn whip just out here if my opponent attacks Pikachu I can activate a trap card that's uh that's outside that's not underneath them or does this trap still needs to be underneath the opponent uh, cards that's attacking or that's under the my own creatures I don't know if I can place trap cards under my own uh, beasties but yeah, as you can see, this is our opening hands. We start off with four, with uh, three forced auras, a beastie, and three spells. So might not something I might be, I might consider keeping this because there is some trap cards we can play early field, and of course our only creature that we want to play is a trap card. And that razor wind can uh, help us get rid of any other early. Or it, it can help us to, to do damage early against the opponent casters. So I'll definitely keep this hand just to try it out. No, that's the point. You can place traps under your own beasties, traps and 
Meta's use function as defensive or retaliation tools against attack. I see. Okay. That's good to know. So, um, let's see. Let's see and draw our card for our first turn. We got the Chieftain. Chieftain doesn't need um, to be placed face down. But let's go ahead place an aura on the battlefield. Let's say we're gonna place some, um, we're gonna place three trap cards. We're gonna put all our eggs in one basket. Uh, one of them is of course the creature and two of them are the thorn whip. We can activate any of them because both these spells and the beasties are one forest each. And um, I do believe we would have to wait till our opponent cast uh, beasties in for our turn mainly to move craps around underneath creatures. Oh, I didn't. Both thorns are on this pile. So we'll wait till our next turn until our opponent plays a beastie to place a uh, Pikachu underneath it. Um, I don't know if there's a restrictions on how many traps you can put under a beastie, but that would be insane to have like all three under under a beastie. So it would be our uh, our opponent's turn. They might play beastie. They might play some spells. They may play some uh, artifacts, and that's good. Um, then once it's our turn, we will awaken everything we can. Uh, one trap per one traps max per beastie. Okay, so only one trap per beastie that we can place it under. So we drew forest aura. We'll play that forest aura. Uh, we'll place a trap underneath our opponent uh, beastie just to make him not want to attack us maybe to do some damage to that beastie um, and of course we can only pick one trap for that beastie so of course I want that creature to uh, be on the board as soon as possible if I had any of the uh, rock forest rocks I would definitely place them in the battlefield um, at this point um, I would just use Razor Wind uh, f at the second turn since I, oh no, I wouldn't because then uh, I, I'd risk the run of not being able to play my trap. Um, a trap on their own is pretty much useless though since your opponent can ping it for free and just ignore it. That's why uh, Pukachi's dex is meh. Yeah, I can see. I'll probably replace some of these. Uh, with the cards that we open up in the uh, in the spell books so you know let's say your opponent decides to attack us you know we'll take it we'll flip the we'll flip the actually do we even have we don't even have a sample actually no we do let's say aha we have some cards here let's say our opponent is attacking us with a uh, uh, river dino um, and so he's attacking us um, before the attacks declare right we'll tap it to flip uh, puke and puke will be our defender defending us against the river dino the river dino will go ahead and attack the the puke for 30 or not for 30 for 10 with its small chops and puke will do will receive 30 damage right or we it's not uh it's not one uh let's go with two you're right two if only we had our third mono so instead of uh instead of two instead of one it has two quivers or two quills it'll do 20 damage to to the river dino back and now we have this guy in the battlefield and both our creatures aren't dead, but of course he's down to a pretty weak state. We can easily take care of that with Puke, or we can use one of the other cards to weaken it as well. So the River, Dinner's, River Dino's done attacking us. We successfully defend against that attack with our Puke. And now it is our turn to uh, reactivate our cards. Draw a card. We end up drawing a force, which is good. 
let's uh, let's play that force terror cards. Uh, there is a zone in between the the line between you and, and the other caster. Uh, that's where the tarot cards are going to be placed. Um, you can only place uh, up to six, I believe, at the same time. And when you play another one, the first one gets rotated out as the line gets uh, built. So it is our next turn. We drew that forest. Uh, really nice. We're going to place another aura on the battlefield. And... Um, at this point, I feel comfortable with. Hmm. With just attacking with pukes for 20 at the opponent, seeing if they use the river dino to block us. Likely won't use the. Uh, they likely won't use the rhino, the river dino to block us unless he doesn't want to receive any damage. But if he does take damage from the puke, we also have the Sracer Wind to uh, to affect it. And because we're attacking, we can't defend. So this will be perfect to put one of our uh, whip at the River Diner or any other Dino that they decide, any other cards that they decide to summon next turn. So I'll attack them for, for 20. Cool, they're down 20 life points. Uh, I want to I wanna have more fun and ping the opponent for... For 25 more so this will go to my graveyard or my cemetery and that is it for my uh, and um, next thing I'll place a trap card under river dino since he didn't use river dino to defend us to def to defend him from our card uh, then I would pass the turn um, and maybe he'll play another creature maybe he might not attack with river dino now that he has a trap underneath it but he's probably going to attack us because I would attack my opponent even with the trap card. And then that's when I will go ahead and throw some Thorn Whips on that poor River Dino. And that Dino will die before doing any damage to me. And then my spell gets uh, exhausted. And then um, it will go back to my turn. I will awaken everything again. Throw my card. Another Forest Aura. Uh, now I have four. Then I can play the chieftain, and the chieftain will gain um, all the other peaks will gain plus ten plus plus ten life points and plus ten damage, making him a uh, sixty life points for now, and ten life and thirty uh, ten more thirty damage in total for his attack, and it also inflicts poison, which is really nice. And of course, full volley. Uh, this will do five plus every uh, quilt counter on it. So currently, it does five by itself. But with the two uh, quilt counters on this puke, this attack will do uh, fifteen damage plus the twenty-five from having the force uh, on the battlefield. So that's pretty much what a, a turn would look like. I guess a small game, setting it up, and also learning how to use the cards. Uh, puke is a trap, so it's. You gotta remember to place them face down. Um, and we have to wait for our opponents to attack us, which kind of sucks, but you know, it is defensive. So now that we have, now that we kind of sort of tried out our turns with this deck, let's see what we can use to improve it. So these are our creatures, this is our spells, this is our auras, beastie spells beasties yeah we didn't see any of the other beast we just saw puke and the spells i wish we had a chance to uh, show off the other cards artifacts spells artifacts auras we can fit more cards if we just slide them over we got whip, forest, puke, forest. Oh, there's more cards now. Um, puke, rump. forest, mantis man.
So after looking at this deck now, um, there is some things I do kind of want to uh, improve in. I kind of want to probably replace the two main um, cast in this deck. Maybe some of the sidelines with some different uncommon cards. Because the only uncommon card here is the is, uh, Thorn Whip. Everything else is uh, pretty much common except for the uh, the crystal, the rock, and the character. So at this point, um, we're going to go ahead and open up a, a spell book. Because now that you've played a few games with your, with your friends, some MetaZoo action. We're going to open a, um, a spell book. And uh, after looking at some of those cards, um, there is a tribal boost in that deck. And the, uh, I believe the tribal boost in that deck is uh, Fearsome Critters. So we'll definitely want to look up, we we'll definitely want to pull cards that are fearsome. So in the spell books, uh, you'll, you'll get a much larger, not larger, but kind of um, squared up map. Actually, this is perfect to show you. You can see the Jersey Devil, the Flatfoot Monsters, all of these awesome cryptic beasties you can uh, have in your deck. Some of them aren't even released yet. Uh, after looking through the map, I've noticed some aren't in the uh, the Cryptic Nation set. Oh, and, and the cool thing about this is you get a cool Cryptic Nation uh, card right here. Uh, for every chapter, contract a page from the MetaZoo Cryptic Nation set without paying its aura cost. So I'm actually going to use this card in my deck. So we have this card right up here. There's some more, um, not a penny sleeve, um, perfect fit sleeves. So I kind of want to add this. This will definitely help with uh, summoning a, uh, a large aura creature from our uh, chapter. So I, I believe this card or some kind of card like this will always be included in uh, future spell books. Um, I know they're sort of updating the products with uh, new things here and there. Um, you get more sleeves, which are awesome because these are my favorite like cheap sleeves now especially because it is yellow yellow it is one of my favorite colors so i'm keeping these cards this is what the metallic coin looks like it actually has the same uh, image as the cryptic nation card so i love this in fact um, i'm gonna be uh right back because there is a a cool thing i did buy at, at a hobby lobby So at Hobby Lobby, there were these coin cases that I found. This is a coin case for a nickel. And it has a little uh, stopper there for the nickel. So if I brought that nickel back here, or it could be the penny, I don't remember. I did buy one for pennies and nickels. Okay, so you see here, it fits the penny perfectly well. Uh, sadly, I picked the wrong size. Pennies or nickels were not the size. The size of these coins are actually the same size as a quarter. So I should have picked up, if you wanna store these coins properly, I would get uh, coin uh, cases quarter cases sorry about that coins are for all the coins pennies dime nickels uh, but you definitely want to pick up quarter uh, coin sleeves or coin cases 
So if I just take out the rubber here, the coin fits perfectly snug in the case here. So now I will have the MetaZoo coin in mint condition. We have the same little rule book that we got in our tribal deck. Uh, I know this will be updated soon, so it's still read through this, but there is the official uh, updated rulebook on the MetaZoo Discord under Rules and Discussions. And we have, uh, of course, packs in our box. So let's go ahead and take the packs out. We'll look at the packs and see uh, what's so cool about that. I'm going to keep this box very mint. 10 packs. Uh, yes, I do believe there is 10 packs in the uh, in the spell books. So these are the Kickstarter packs. As we can see, we have a Mothman. A Moth Pack Pack. Bay of the Blue Ox. The Paisa Bird. Oh no, everything's in the way now. Please, obey me. The mic is in my way, so I can't really see what's going on over here, but uh, let's see. We got the Paizo, we got the, we got Bay's Blue Ox, and we have one more. We have Hodog. So these are what the Kickstarter booster packs look like. These are actually really hard to get, and uh, Fun fact, I do open these up live uh, and also for breaks. I'm going to go ahead and open some of these up, especially uh, these four here. I will save... Oh, well, we got more Bay the Blue Ox sleeves than we did uh, Paisa, Hodog, and one, Meta, and one uh, Mothman. So I believe Mothman's going to be in this pack because I've seen it before. I've seen a few openings where um, Mothman and <laughs> Dark Aura has been in this pack. Um, but that's pretty cool. So we're actually going to open up some, um, we're going to open up the, a few packs. I'm not going to open all 10. I think I'm going to open a six pack. I don't have uh, some open sleeves to, um, for display. So I want to display these four packs because these are beautiful art. The artwork on the, on the packs is so amazing. It's so shiny. This is what the back of the Kickstarter booster packs look like. You have the the name of the game, the Instagram handle, the Kickstarter symbol, because this was a Kickstarter game. Um, the QR code here will send you to the website. These are the, I believe, 10 available uh, types. For MetaZoo, you have Water, Spirit, Neutral, Lightning, Light, Frost, Forest, Flames, Earth, Darkness, and Cosmic. So these are the type of cards you can pull. So let's go ahead and put these to the side because these I'm going to save and preserve uh, for my display case that I have of all the MetaZoo Kickstarter products. And we're going to open up these bad boys here and see what kind of cards we can pull to improve uh, our tribe deck. And that's the fun thing about trading card games. You know, you just open up packs and you have fun with it. Uh, let me go ahead and do my usual. We have haste. We have a health potion. We have Lake Worth monster. Lava bear. Cosmic Aura, and for our rare, we have a Blood Ruby, very nice, and we have, uh, that's weird, the positioning's way off, um, we have Rock Rain, Hugging Molly, and we feed Monster Stone, no, no Forest cards, kind of sad, um, we did pick up Health Potion, which can be put in any deck, and it gives our, it restores, uh, recovers 25 life points for beasties or artifacts. 
but that Cosmo energy is nice. That Blood Ruby is really nice. And even though it's not going to be played, it's still going to go in our binder. And I'm going to go ahead and sleeve this bad boy up. It has been sleeved. Our next pack here. I'm uh, pretty happy too because in the in the first edition packs, the tab's going to be behind it, behind the tab over here, where the black stamp, where the black uh, square is, or where the black starts, and not on the side because I've been having problems trying to open. A lot of people have been having problems opening up these packs. So let's see for our commons. That's so weird. Our uncommons are here. I think the uh, spellbook packs are arranged differently. Uh, oh, another Thorn Whip. We might want to add that to the deck because we like Thorn Beams. Balancing uh, Beam might be really helpful um, if I'm playing against a younger opponent. Frozen People, Killer Clown, Broom, Chibi Mothman. We got the Mothman. We have a Raining Terror card. Oh, and we have a Sally Gaster. Actually, thinking about this, adding Cryptic Nation and Sally Gaster, we can have Sally Gaster in turn two. And it's a reverse foil, very nice. Um, it does, whenever Beastie Dragons deal more than 50 damage during a single turn, Sally Gaster does 25 damage, or 25 life points, and it has Talon Swoop. Talon Swoop does 10 more damage for each Beastie Fearsome crit Critters in your arena. Oh, so this will be very helpful to boost up the forest tribal deck since we're using fearsome critters. So just like Cryptic Nation, we're going to put Cryptic Nation, we're going to put Sally Gaster in our deck. We have two cards to replace in our deck or we can just add it. We got White Thing. White Thing is uh, also very handy. Alien Astronaut. Anti Magic Field. That is a trap card uh, Kenny was talking about. Bunny Man. Daytime. And we got a Chupacabla. Reverse Foil. Very nice. Um, just like our, um, our cards here, we have Hide Behind. Uh, this is a fearsome BC creature, so we might definitely put hide behind uh, in our deck. Uh, healing touch and rock rain. White thing is my stripper name. Aha! We got Landris in the house. Welcome in. Good to see you. I uh, should be in Discord later. Right now I'm just uh, sort of doing a video because uh, I kind of want to show people like what the available pro uh, what was available for the Kickstarter line and I'm also improving the tribal deck so so far it looks like we have three cards that we're gonna add to the to the forest tribal deck Hopefully we'll have a, uh, a white, a light aura deck theme in the future, Anthony. Because just like the white thing, you only play with white cards. <laughs> so we have Antidote, Bat Squatch, Bookmark. A second bookmark might be nice to add to the deck. Broom, Power Up Green. Maybe I'll consider it. Photon beam, retribution, cosmic aura, and oh, we got a squanch. Another good card. I believe it is also a uh, fearsome critter, so we'll definitely find a way for him to uh, to fit in the deck. He will make other cards stronger, and he will be himself. He will make himself stronger, and uh, he does help with removing some effects 
from our opponent. So not a bad, not a bad pack. We were able to find three cards that we can use in our deck. Power up green to uh, make our cards stronger. Another bookmark because we only had one in the uh, tribal deck. We have two more packs to go through. We have anti cold magic, bunny man, cactus cap, earthquake, lightning in the bottle. This might be, even though um, it is a lightning card. It costs zero lightning to play, so this will definitely be something I might want to add to the deck as well. Uh, maybe Luck Potion, I don't think we have anything to do with a, a coin or a dice roll. Hehe <laughs> Mew, and our bear is the Beast of Busco. And the ground. Still no force, but I think it's... Uh, it's reasonable to see hard it's uh, very hard to get some of the tarot cards that you might want star is a hard tarot card to uh, get from the booster packs so we got one card useful for the deck lightning in a bottle it is a uncommon we definitely want to look for more of those uh, for our decks and our last pack to open I see a green common that's a good sign. We have Silver Cat. Sadly a Beastie Cat, so we might, we might not even consider it. Uh, Space Penguin. Lan Skull Lanterns. Oh! Uh, Wapless. This might be a useful card. We have a Water Aura. And we got a baby, a Chibi Quetzal. Cool, cool. Going into the Lightning deck. We have Poop Snake, that's useful for the deck. And another Squawks, useful for the deck. Wow, this pack, the last pack definitely did give us some good cards to consider in our deck. Of course, not Quaxel because uh, we don't run Lightning in the uh, in the deck, but we do. We did get four uh, green cards. I kind of like how they're, if you, it's weird, like, uh, you can see that the ink is fading. One card is darker than the other. Uh, but I believe they're both um, forest cards. Yeah, just uh, it's weird that the that the cards that the color is fading. Trying to make every card lighter. So let's see. Let's sleeve up Quetzal. Definitely going into my lightning deck. I love this beautiful fat bird. I don't like how it's reverse foil, so I can't show you the beautiful art artwork, but it is quite nice. So not bad. Busco is is worth money. Uh, Blood Ruby is worth money. Chupacabra is worth money. Chibi Quetzal, I think it, it is also worth money. But I would need uh, the other two to complete the set to make it worth selling. And uh, that is our rare. We're going to put our rare in our rare pile. Sort our, our commons and uncommons uh, next time. Because right now we're going to go ahead and uh, update the, um, the tribal deck. So let me go ahead and sleeve these cards up here. Uh, I'm not Silvercat. Silvercat can go back in the pile. We do want a Squanch. Squonks. Um, you can only, uh, if you're crying tears, Squonks will gain, I believe, flying. Where is the mini handbook? Here it is. Quick reference for the abilities, I believe. Oh no, if you can cry, he'll gain Immoral. Um, Beastie or Artifact, Wisps crates are not destroyed when their life points are is reduced to zero. It must be removed from the arena by special means. 
huh so that means once it goes down to zero it just stays there yeah I guess wow so if I can cry he will stay on the board and I can cry if your opponent can cry if your op opposing caster cries tears Skunks will appreciate the sympathy and leaves the arena. It goes to the afterlife. <laughs> Make sure that your opponents will start bringing onions to the battlefield. Uh, hoop snake, uh, three aura. Ooh, more abilities, abilities that I don't know of. So what is the plus sign? The plus sign is regen. A beastie with this trait. Uh, recover X LP each turn until it reaches its maximum HP. Oh wow. Each turn. So each turn it can regenerate its uh, 30 uh, hit points. Um, or life points. But it does get stronger for every other beasties. So the more beasts you can have on the field, the more tankier Hoop Snake gets. And let's see, what is the swirl? What is the swirl? The swirl is convert. Uh, you may fatigue a beast or artifact with this trait to generate one aura of the same type as the page with this trait. So the, you can use these guys as um, aura generators. Very nice. Definitely would want that in a deck, uh, especially with some cars like Puke. The more the more um, auras you can put on the on him, the stronger the Puke will get. Uh, same with uh, Wapolis. It does generate auras as well. Can be very handy. Traits grants beasts or artifacts special abilities, and beasts or artifacts that share the traits usually do so for a specific purpose. I kind of want to see what poison does. Can affect beasties or caster. A page or caster may, um, may have up to three poison indicators on it. When a page or caster is inflicted with poison, place a poison indicator on the page or in front of you. Um, poison page and caster's lose life points equal to 10 times the number of poison indicators until the end of each turn. A poison indicator is removed at the start of the second turn from which it is placed. Oh, that's very interesting. Poison, poison. Oh, the rules for traps, the rules for terras, running out of pages. Running out of pages in your spellbook does not represent any specific special win or lose condition. You cannot bookmark a page uh, from your spellbook when asked to do so by this effect or at the start of your turn. Ignore it. Please uh, play continue continually as normal. Uh, if all casters run out of page of their spell, spellbooks, the game ends in a draw. Uh, very nice, very nice. See Mulligan Combat, the Order of Operation, very cool, the effects, okay so these are what the effects is, Frozen, Burn, Poison, Paralyzed, Sleep, Scare, and Confusion. Um, poison was something that I saw, it can affect BCs or casters, if something is poisoned it loses life points uh, each time it is poisoned for two turns and can be poisoned up to three times at once. So be careful. Okay, so in two turns the poison will go away. And you can only have up to three poison counters on uh, on target beasties or even casters. So that's something to watch out for. So very fun. Very fun learning the game with everyone else. Uh, bookmark is good because we get to draw more cards when we spin an aura. Lightning in a bottle is good because it will make our uh, it will awaken our uh, fatigue beasties that come into the board, and of course, um, that beastie will gain a special trait called uh, 
First strike. A beast to your spell list this race will always deal damage crits, uh, whether attacking or defending. If both attackers and defender has this trait, flip a coin to determine who deals damage first. Nice, nice. Very cool. Um, so now that we have, now that we open some booster packs, we have some extra sleeve here. I need to check to see if they don't have any over overlay because I don't like the way some of the sleeves they weren't cut properly, so they have extra plastic on top, making the card making the sleeve kind of uh, markable. We got power, oh yeah, power up green uh, for one or for one of any aura in one forest. Um, target beast will gain twenty five life points. It attacks gain twenty five damage and it'll and convert until the end of the next turn. So it'll be stronger, um, but you can also use it to tap for mana. No, not mana for um, aura. We got Squawks. Squawks is best boy in the deck. Hide behind nuts. This is another uh, strange card. Um, it is a trap card, so we have to play it um, face down uh, in order to play it. And we have to wait for our opponent to attack us. Um, it gets stronger for any forest terras in the battlefield. And there's a special condition. Combat damage dealt by high behind is zero. If the controlling controller of the opponent page in combat is, or if it's a target of attack declared by high behind drinking a beverage, high behind must be placed behind an object of the arena when contracted. If this object is moved or high behind is moved out from behind the object, place high behind into the cemetery. Oh wow, so you gotta keep hide behind uh, hidden behind something. Grab a boost. Um, this page will gain plus 10 life points and plus 10 damage for every other fearsome, fearsome critter in the arena. And the attack is ambush. Very nice. Um, the two cards that I definitely want to add to this deck is uh, Sally, Sally Gast. And you can only have one per spell book. And same with uh, Cryptic Nation. Cryptic Nation lets you play any lets you play any card from your uh, from your hand, right? Your chapter is your hand. Your spellbook is your library. Oh, whoops! I'm pushing the card out of the sleeve because I was trying to sleeve it. So for two of any aura, you can play a card from your hand without paying the rest of the cost. This is just the beginning of our journey. Together we can do anything. Sam Sinclair. Sam Sinclair is the main character of this game. Kind of like Ash from Pokemon. So we have the two cards that we definitely want in our deck. We definitely want to add another bookmark to this deck. Anything that we pulled up, we might want to consider adding. Uh, definitely landing in the bottle uh, for that aggro. And then hoop snake, hide behind. Hide behind. These are both three cost features so it could be hard to play if we don't get enough mana but if they end up being the only thing we could play by turn three not um, draw any auras they can help us cast more cards so sync I'm gonna consider adding these cards to the deck
we got the two squonks. We got Cryptic Nation and uh, Sally Guest. We definitely need the bookmark. We definitely want to add some lightning. And I think we want to put Hoop Snake in. Um, so that is seven cards. We have to uh, either swap this our deck here. So our Razor Win is good. I do like we can do 25 damage to the caster. Um, but I feel like this is more of a sideboard card. So we're gonna, I'm going to put Razor Win to the uh, to the side. Um, Thorn Whip is a good trap card. Uh, Rope Right um, is still a good card. It has Convert too, so it can cast for um, Auras. I wish we had more. So I guess uh, if you're going to play uh, Forest, you might want to pick up two or even three of the uh, Tribal Decks uh, for the Forest Tribal Deck. Um, Ape. I feel like Ape will be replaced by the Squonks. But it does get Tribal Boost, so I want to keep that. What doesn't get Tribal Boost? Does Mantis Man? Mantis Man does not get Tribal Boost. However, it is a tank. 70 life points. So I think we're going to replace Mantis Man. So that is already 6 cards. Oh, 4 cards. So that's already 7 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep, that is already 7 cards in our sideboard. Which means we can add these cards that we had set aside into our deck. So we're adding 4 more creatures and uh, 2 more spells, and or 3 more spells. Technically this is a potion, so it's an item. So very good, we just updated the Forest Tribal deck with some more Fearsome Critters. I feel like I should replace some of the other creatures as well, but since we only opened up six packs, we didn't have a lot to work with. Of course, if we opened up more packs, and of course, if we ask around our friends uh, who have extra Forest cards to trade us for some of the cards in our trade binder, um, we can totally see this deck being a pretty strong uh, powerhouse. So of course uh, I will definitely um, improve this deck maybe in the next visit and definitely when I do play a game against some of the other um, uh, players in the discord. I kind of want to record um, our gameplay though so I kind of want to have sort of style where the two screens are facing each other so we can see both our boards and in a way that uh, it's easy for both the watcher to see what our hands are. So it's kind of weird. I'm going to have to think about that because uh, I kind of want to do it where it's like um, side to side. So one player here and the other players here and the cards are facing uh, pretty much this way. Or I can do a dual screen where like this we have or my bad for the screen for you guys to see it will be like that so you can see player one up here and then player two down here and if we have four players just down the middle and you can have the four uh, battlefield of each players and maybe do some kind of cool design like in the middle where um, we'll have the terror cards so we can actually see what terror cards are in the battlefield It'll be easier for um, the players too to know what kind of tarot cards there is on the battlefield too. Because right now there's really no order of oper there's no line for all of us to follow. We just have to trust each other. Like, hey, I played a forest first, then somebody played a raining, then someone played shooting stars or ground or thundering, thunder and all that. I think I shuffled this deck pretty good enough. I'm going to go ahead and pile shuffle this. Half turns on pile shuffling. We'll see what a hand would look like for a game.
So now our dex is pretty well shuffled. Go ahead, cut my deck, and then draw the seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for our hand, we have rope, aura, bookmark, rope, rope, of course, landing in a bar bottle. Wow, this is actually a really good hand. Um, so um, if we were to go first, uh, we would draw a card, we would get a thorn whip, very nice. Uh, what I would do here is place my forest in the Terra stack, then play a Frost Aura, then tap it to play Rope Tide, and uh, Beasties and Artifacts will enter the battlefield uh, exhausted, so they'll be tapped. Um, but then Play lightning on a bottle, give the potion to rope uh rope right, and it will awaken the BC and he'll get first strike if I choose to attack with them. But I'm not gonna go ahead and attack with them. Instead, uh, we're gonna go ahead uh, convert with them to generate a, a forest aura, and then with that forest aura, we're gonna use it to uh, play bookmark in order to bookmark two pages into our hand here. So bookmark, we got a little uh, puke in our hand now, and we got cryptic nation. Very nice. We haven't drawn um, we haven't drawn um, the the big guy yet, but we're hoping to. And so for for our first turn, it's not that bad. We got our we got our aura. We got a generator here. We're able to draw two more cards thanks to rope right being a converter and having our forest Tara to make our later, later creatures much more stronger. So it's our opponent's turn, he'll play his aura, he'll play maybe a creature if he has it on the battlefield, and it's already exhausted so we don't have to worry about uh, it attacking us, unless it has a lightning in a bottle. So we'll go ahead back to our turn. We, uh, it, um, we awaken our uh, stuff on the arena, we'll draw a card, we got another puke, Sadly, with the whole pukes and um, and the uh, thorn whip, they are crap cards. So we can the best we can do is place them face down as traps and uh, maybe put puke underneath uh, that weak creature that our opponent has played. Um, let me go ahead and look at a random one or a card from our pack that we opened. Let's see, what is a one pack? A one aura. One aura creature. No, Bunny Man is two. Alright, let's say our opponent played a alien astronaut. Uh, it can only be contracted if you phone home, however you define it. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm going to call home. Home, I have no home. So uh, we have this is our opponent card. We have our trap underneath it. We have our auras there. Technically, that creature would be exhausted because our opponent just played it. Um, we're of course gonna play a forced aura. Mm -hmm -hmm. So we have up to three for that puke, which is more than enough to destroy the um, the alien astronaut. So we pass it on to your opponent's turn. Uh, we haven't tapped uh, rope right yet because we want to maybe defend with him. Um, he's not hes not going to be enough to uh, kill the um, astronaut, but that's fine with me because if he does attack with us like our opponent wants to, we can pay two mana to be comfortable to destroy the alien astronaut or we can convert with uh, Rope Right, make it three forced auras, and play our crap, which is Pukiji. And Pukiji will be, will have an attack of 30 instead of uh, 20 or 10. We'll take 10 damage from the alien, bringing it down to 40, uh, and then doing more damage back. 
and um, killing the alien astronauts. So that's pretty cool. We have two pukes, or a puke in the battlefield. We have, uh, both of them have convert. And we have a thorn whip in the, um, in the crap zone. Um, so if there is a, um, if somebody wants to attack, if some, if our opponent cast anything, we can always put that crap underneath their beasties, or we can even put it under ours. Some craps are helpful towards us. Call it, call it for, our opponent would call it for their turn. We, it would be our turn. We would draw a card, another force aura. Um, that is um, our second auras. The only best place we can do here is place a Pukachi in the top zone, crap zone, and wait for our opponents. Since our opponent likely doesn't have anything on the board, uh, we'll attack all out. Uh, 30 from uh, Pukachi and 15 from the uh, rope right, attacking our opponents for some damage. And of course, um, later on, oh wow, more forest. Oh wow, it looks like we're only going to be <laughs> having a big aura field uh, for a few turns until we hit that bookmark. Cryptic Nation is still in our hand. We still have a few traps. Uh, I'm guessing maybe uh, our opponent will kill our, our puke. We'll wait till uh, our, our other puke is out, and this time this puke will likely be one, two, three, four, five, six, six tokens strong with those six qu quills dealing 60 damage. Um, playing that bookmark, we'll get forest and thorn whip. Wow, not a, our big creatures. Another crap there. Then it would go back to our turns again. Of course, play squawks and uh, try to cat cry, tell a sad story, uh, be a little sad. Um, Gisu will be boosted now, so he'll be 40 life and dealing 25, and uh, he'll be 40 life points, and his uh, drowning stars will do 40 damage as well. Still waiting for something big to play with Cryptic Nation. We definitely want that Sally. Oh wow, another aura card. Um, we don't have another puke to uh, to make a really big to make a uh, a very fighty puke key. Oh, there's our um, forest god Umber. Uh, that's going in the battlefield tap. And then awaken after our next turn. Another forest aura. Another forest aura. Another forest aura. Oh wow! Look at this. Uh, uh, we got all our forest auras. Um, another uh, crap card that we have to wait for our opponents to uh, draw, but of course once our opponent attacks us, he's on the battlefield, he's, he's also another uh, travel card for fearsome critters, so now each of them will get plus 30 for their health points and attack, uh, that's really cool. Another puke, and uh, by the now in this late game, this puke is, is a powerhouse. Um, because when we flip it, we'll likely we'll use all our auras uh, to give it as many quills as it can hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen quill tokens on that um, Pukagi. Uh Thirteen quivers will make it uh, ten times thirteen. That will make it. That will do one hundred and thirty damage. Uh, when it attacks, and it can also generate um, energy uh, aura as well. We say, if we still have that cryptic nation in our hand, we're just waiting for the long game. It, it's supposed to help us in the early game to uh, draw that one card, a chaos crystal. Chaos crystals late game is not very helpful. Another Squawks, uh, of course, trying to cry a tear so he can be immortal, so he stays in the battlefield defending our zone. And there we go. Uh, by this time, you, we're doing damage with our Pikachis. We're hitting our opponent life points. Um, each player has a thousand life points. 
So kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh, it takes a while for <laughs> things that are just doing 10 to 50 damage a while to bring your opponent down. But like the pukes, Pika G's, um, the more ores we have on the battlefield, the more ores we can generate, the stronger the uh, the card will get, the stronger his attack will get. Now, of course, we don't need to pay seven ores for uh, Snallygaster. The whole plan was to cast Cryptic Nation to pull Sally out in the battlefield and play him for two mana. Uh, of course, uh, whenever I believe he does damage because his talent swoop <coughs> basically has a tribal is basically a tribal boost uh, except of life points it gains uh, damage uh, but of course when he does 50 damage um, he himself will also gain more life points which maybe a health potion might be helpful or handy uh, with the uh, with the deck um, we were really hoping for some hoop snake there is that chief was that volley was having possibly uh let's say 15 quill tokens uh let's see 15 times 5 that is about 75 damage i think oh wow i think now uh, that i'm getting this understanding of the deck i think we might want to cut down on uh on auras, I definitely want to look for more hoop snake. Uh, I would want to definitely open up another pack, another deck, and get some rope rights because these rope rights they're pretty strong. They're one, they're one aura. They can generate an aura themselves, and they can remove flying off uh, target beasties uh, when you tap them. And of course, it has tribal boost. So for every other fearsome critters. It just gets stronger and tankier as well. So I think that's what I will look into for updating the Tribal Forest deck. Of course, I will uh, write about how to improve the Tribal deck and trying a more um, refined version of this deck and possibly a further str uh, stream or even um, live in Discord. But yeah, I, I can't wait to test this out now that I'm seeing all the cards. I do want to add a Happy New Year's to this uh, deck, which of course the only way to get the, the that card is of course buying it during Happy New Year's week from MetaZoo. But yeah, I think this might be a strong deck. I would possibly cut down in Forced Auras, adding more Hoop Snakes. Maybe getting rid of Thorn Whip, uh, unless I add Chaos Potion into the into the deck. Because how many uh, Thorn Whips do we have? Quite a few. So yeah, I would probably take a few auras out of the deck. I would completely get rid of the of the Thorn Whips. And uh, Pukagi, I would probably take out a few pukes. I'll likely only keep three in the deck. The rest will go and get replaced by another card. Yeah, I think that's uh this can look like a like a pretty strong card, especially with uh fearsome critter being a being a tribal theme these uh these uh, tribal decks themselves are really helpful for new players so yeah if you were e ever want to get into a meta zoo especially if you just want to start playing find one of these decks here uh, we should be seeing more of the first edition stuff dropping in uh, July or even January. But yeah, there's there's four more other tribal decks, and we'll definitely fo uh, 
work on the other tribal decks uh, the more we get into making more videos for MetaZoo. And I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Let's see who is available online. Oh no, just one of my friends. Let's see, is there anyone that is relatable to MetaZoo? No, not really. So we're going to go ahead and create a good friend. Say hi to her. And uh, we'll definitely talk more about MetaZoo in the future. Um, also in the notes. I'm doing a uh, box break uh, for MetaZoo on the 15. I already sold um, the packs uh, earlier this week and that sold out uh, surprisingly very fast for $35 a pack. Uh, this second wave will go live next Thursday and I will likely raise the price up to $45 a pack just because I want less people to buy multiples of them. And I want people to at least get some really cool uh, Kickstarter cards. So look, uh, hear, you'll hear more about it on Instagram, in the MetaZoo Discord as well, um, and on the Facebook page. So keep an eye on there. Um, and I'll see you guys uh, next time.